This past weekend, Van Eaton Galleries in Sherman Oaks, California held another one of their epic Disneyland auctions. This time, boasting over 1,100 items in an auction titled Disneyland The First 65 Years. Now, ironically, during the 65th year, so far, no one's been able to go inside of the park. We all know that 2020 has been an economic uh, huff spot for many citizens of America and citizens of Disneyland. However, there are always going to be some people that are recession proof that are not only surviving, but thriving. And those folks have had a lot of pent up consumer aggression. A big 1100 piece Disneyland auction was the perfect moment to let some of that consumer aggression go. Given this auction, the perfect storm to blow the roof right off the auction house as some of these pent up consumers blow that money that's been burning a hole in their little red shorts. This is the top 10 most expensive items from Disneyland, the first 65 years auction. Number 10, Blue Bayou table and chair set. With a pre-auction estimate of $500 to $700, the actual auction price, $7,187, making it 14 times the opening suggested bid. A 2000s era, very rare original table with four chairs from the Blue Bayou restaurant. Composed of wood, metal, and fabric, these park-used furniture pieces resemble the architectural style seen throughout New Orleans Square. How do you suppose one displays a collectible table and chair that they don't use? Is there like that fancy room that you walk into? It's like, don't sit at that table and chair. That's my $7,000 Blue Bayou table and chair rig. Or is somebody actually using it? I would love to think that somebody somewhere is eating dinner every night at a Blue Bayou table and chair set. Monte Cristo Monday, Monte Cristo Tuesday, Monte Cristo Wednesday, Monte Cristo Thursday, Monte Cristo Friday, Monte Cristo Saturday. <laughs> Monte Cristo Sunday. Oh, Monte Cristo seven days of the week. It is pretty cool though, that it's an actual used table and chair from the park. That I like. Number nine, Pirates of the Caribbean attraction poster. With a pre-auction estimate of $7,000 to $10,000, actual auction sale price $10,625. Making this only one and a half times the suggested opening bid, making this one of the more conservative bidding wars that we'll see on today's countdown. A 1967 extremely rare original hand silkscreen attraction poster for Pirates of the Caribbean. Designed by Colin Campbell, this poster is one of the most difficult to find and is always in high demand amongst pirate collectors. The poster measures 54 by 36 and the poster boasts sell with the wildest crew that ever sacked Spanish Main. Are, are we attacking the Spaniards when we, when we pirates? I, I wasn't aware of that. Is that, is that really what's happening? I mean, I guess we're attacking somebody. I mean, it's a pirate lifestyle, right? It's not about being a nice guy. Oh, the irony of spending over $10,000 on a poster that celebrates pirates. If these were pirate times, this auction winner would for sure be someone who would get pillaged by said pirates. If this auction winner collected their fortune by being a pirate, to you, I apologize. Number eight, Disneyland Insurance Engineering Report and Fold Out Map. With a pre-auction estimate of $4,000 to $6,000, the actual auction sale price, $10,625, the same price as the Pirates poster. To me, the number eight item at the same price as the number nine item is a better deal because this is incredibly rare and a very interesting look into the origins of Disneyland. And it's at number eight because it is two and a half times its opening auction price. The 1955 insurance and engineering report for fire safety at Disneyland was prepared by the firm Marsh and McLennan in August of 55. The report includes details regarding fire safety operations as well as recommendations to be completed. Of particular note is an included fold-out map of the park with markings that correspond to the safety report. 
Reports such as this were instrumental in the development and safety of Disneyland during its opening year. The corresponding map of Disneyland is believed to have been created specifically for this report and is unlike any other map of the park that we've ever encountered. My favorite part of this auction, looking over the previews that we were giving of it reads, the principal buildings are custom built. One and mainly one equals two stories in height with wooden and stucco clad exteriors supported on bare steel structural members with roofs generally insulated. Many of the structures have turrets and towers and additional trim, which add to the height of the buildings. And for the most part, are of special design. <laughs> special indeed. Occupancies are fairly well established, except for one theater building, which is currently used as a wood shop. That last paragraph is amazing because they're talking about the Main Street Opera House, which in the beginning of Disneyland was actually the wood mill. It wouldn't become great moments with Mr. Lincoln until a decade later. In the early days of Disneyland, it was a workshop. This thing is, is fascinating and, and really crazy. And if I were in the group of people that have $10,000 to spend on miscellaneous Disney items, this is the type of thing that I would love to have. And speaking of things I would love to have, number seven, a Joe Fowler signed letter. The pre-auction estimate on this one was $200 to $400. It came in at a whopping auction price of $11,875, making this one the highest over asking price item on today's top 10 countdown 59 times the opening bid price. Fun fact, no email will ever be worth 59 times free. This 1967 inter-office letter written seven months after Walt Disney's death by Joe Fowler, who was the general manager of Disneyland. This letter was typed on Disneyland office stationery during the park's first anniversary after Walt's death, July 17th, 1967, and references the creation of the new employee handbook, the Walt Disney Traditions at Disneyland and Fowler's Harbor is my favorite spot at Disneyland. I refer to Admiral Joe Fowler as the man who built Disneyland. Reading this letter somehow makes me love Fowler's Harbor even more, and this is a man who once fought a tiger with a two by four at Disneyland. Number six, Splash Mountain Fast Pass sign. What are you gonna do with this? A pre-auction estimate of $800 to $1,000, an actual sale price of $15,000, nearly 19 times the opening price. This item is from the 2000s and is a very rare freestanding sign from Disneyland Splash Mountain. The sign was used at the entrance of the Fast Pass area for the attraction. It reminds guests to have their tickets ready and the potential riders must be at least 40 inches tall. The sign is composed of dense foam with a fiberglass hard coat and a heavy metal pole runs through the sign down to the base. It measures 63 inches tall. How do you do whatever you do to afford a $15,000 sign? How do you do whatever you do? What do you do with the sign? What do you do with the sign? What do you do with the sign? Number five, a Pirates of the Caribbean entrance sign artist proof. Pre-auction estimate, $800 to $1,000, auction sale price $17,500, 21 times over the opening bid suggested price. A proof for a sign, not the actual sign, a proof for the sign that costs almost as much as a brand new Honda Civic, which makes it a pirate's life for the bidding. This 1987 incredibly rare silkscreen test run for the entrance sign to Disneyland's Pirates of the Caribbean. The silkscreen imagery is hand numbered in the bottom right corner and is numbered 10 of 10 artist proof. These artist proofs were made to get approval before the actual signs were created. The teal paint has a wonderful shimmer to it and catches the light. It measures 30 inches by 19 inches. A thrilling adventure through dark, mysterious caverns where dead men tell no tells. And Disneyland collecting husbands do not tell their wives final prices on their auction items. I mean, this had to be a guy, right? I mean, a guy buys this all day long. 
a woman would be too sensible. Number four, original Fantasyland attraction poster. The pre-auction estimate was between four and $6,000. The actual auction sale price, $23,750, making it almost six times the opening bid. This is a 1955 original hand silk screen poster for Disneyland's Fantasyland. This Bjorn Aronson design poster features the Mad Tea Party, Dumbo, and King Arthur's Carousel attractions. So, I mean, it's kind of like buy one attraction, get two free, right? The poster measures 54 by 36 and is in good condition. Seems like when you break it down, I mean, three attractions, one poster, I mean, you're really only spending $7,900 per attraction. Sweet deal. You'd be stupid not to buy this. Number three, Enchanted Tiki Room Fountain Shield Prop. The pre-auction estimate was between four and $6,000 Actual auction sale price, $29,375, over seven times the original bid. This is a 1980s hand-painted fountain shield prop from Walt Disney's Enchanted Tiki Room. This type of shield was designed by Imagineer Rolly Crump. What a guy, as an iconic part of the attraction's experience. With these shields surrounding the large fountain at the center of the show, Crump's original sculpt was later used to make replacement shields for Disneyland. It, did somebody spend $29,000 for a replacement shield? I would love to know, do they understand that they didn't get one of the original shields? I mean, this was made from a mold of what Raleigh originally did. I would love to know if they caught that detail. Crump's original sculpt was later used to make replacement shields for Disneyland as well as additional shields to be used at Walt Disney World. It's composed of hand-painted fiberglass. This particular shield is attributed to Disneyland's version of the attraction. This shield at nearly $30,000 is protecting someone of ever being accused of being frugal. Number two, original Space Mountain attraction vehicle. The pre-auction estimate was between fifty dollars and $60,000. The actual auction sale price, $53,125. It's interesting, on this bigger item, we don't see it going nearly as far, which I would think would mean that the people that were in this for the $50,000 plus items, they kind of know where they're at. The smaller items that were supposed to be a few hundred or a few thousands of dollars that got to tens of thousands of dollars, I would guess that those are probably newer folks on the auction scene, people that are literally what I said at the opening video that had a little bit of money burning a hole in their pocket that got caught up in the moment of like, oh my God, I'm allowed to buy something in 2020. I get to feel shopping again. I need some Disney experiences. This 1977 original opening year attraction vehicle is from Space Mountain at Disneyland. The vehicle comes from collector Kevin Doherty, who has masterfully restored this vehicle to museum quality. The original attraction vehicles were refurbished in the mid 90s with added headrests containing high quality Boston acoustic speakers. This vehicle contains much of its original working speakers with two replacement Boston acoustic speakers used to maintain proper sound balance. Whoa, it actually has working speakers in it? Oh, sounding like a better deal every second. The vehicle's hard vinyl seating had weathered from age and has been replaced with a lightly padded half inch softer vinyl with a stitched seat for added comfort. At least it's gonna be comfortable while still maintaining the original visual appeal. The vehicle was repainted with high quality iridescent paint that can glow in the dark for up to seven hours. <laughs> that would be awesome to have in your living room. Good night, everybody. You turn off the light, don't worry. That Space Mountain cart over there in the corner, it's gonna glow till 7 a.m. and still features working audio and lap bar. The vehicle measures in 44 inches tall, 48 inches wide, and 120 inches long. That's 10 feet long. It says museum quality. I'd love to know, is this going to a private individual or did a museum somewhere buy this for a collection? I mean, that's, <laughs> That's a big thing to have in your home or office. Just imagine, this would be the perfect place for you and five of your closest friends to sit in your living room while listening to your Boston acoustic speakers play. There's a big, bright, beautiful tomorrow while you each dream of a better Tomorrowland. Or a bulldozer, because a better Tomorrowland and a bulldozer kind of go hand in hand, right? The number one highest 
price item from Disneyland the first 65 years auction. Over 1,100 other items were there. This one proudly sits at number one. The Don DeFore's Silver Banjo Entrance Sign. It had a pre-auction estimate of fifty to $70,000. Actual auction price, $56,250. Just 12.5% over the minimum bid. This is the original lighted entrance sign for Don DeFore's Silver Banjo Barbecue in Frontierland. From 57 to 62, this banjo-shaped sign hung over the popular restaurant, inviting guests in for a meal presented by popular film and television star Don DeFoe. You kids love Don DeFoe. Don DeFoe is best known to baby boomers and rerun fans as Thorny Thornberry on The Adventures of Ozzy and Harriet. The restaurant closed in 1961 to allow for an expansion of Aunt Jemima's Kitchen. Just stayed with the banjo. And is now the current location for Rancho del Zocalo. Nailed it. Original artifacts from this short-lived early Frontierland location are some of the most difficult to come by. This is a one-of-a-kind original sign, features hand-painted lettering and a metal body, and has been fitted with an electrical plug for a stunning lighted display. I have to admit, it does look really, really cool lit up. I mean, this would be an awesome thing to have uh, in, in your home or office. Following the closure of the restaurant, DeFore kept the sign and displayed it for many years in his home. Someone from the auction house is a picking and a grinning all the way from the auction house to the bank. And who could have ever picked 1,100 items? A banjo. A banjo would come in first place. But it does make sense when you think about that it's a sign and it's a sign that actually hung up in the park for a rare part of Disneyland history. It, it's a little bit wild, but it, it does make sense the more that you think about it. There you go, citizens of Disneyland. There are the top 10 most expensive items from Disneyland the first 65 years, an auction held by Van Eaton Galleries in Sherman Oaks. I'd love to ask below, what did you see in the auction that you would want to have? Money not an issue, what would be your number one draft pick? For me, I wanted the Robert, I'm gonna have to read this, Robert Olszewski Main Street train set. Did you see that thing? A, a Main Street train set on a tabletop? Oh, I would love to have that. My number two draft pick was the Mark Twain Life Preserver. Would love to have that thing but I would happily right now settle for the greatest Disneyland treasure ever made, a park ticket for tomorrow. If you enjoyed this video, please let me know, comment below, and come on, do me a solid. Follow along with the channel. It's really, really sad over here, and just one person would make a difference.